Hey, let me ask you a question. Have you ever messed up a moment because you responded to someone in an angry way or a harsh way? Rather than causing the situation to subside and de-escalate by showing kindness? I know I have. Let's just be honest and tell the truth. If you've done that before, type yes in the comments. Well, you're watching the Midweek Refill. I'm Bishop A. Reginald Littman, your host. And right now we're in the middle of a great little series that we're simply calling Finding Peace When Life Spins Out of Control. And in this week, we're going to be talking about session two, which is Go in Peace. Hey, I think you're going to enjoy this. So make sure you like, share, subscribe, and let someone else know so they can tune in and watch this right along with you. I'll be back right after this. Welcome back to another episode. Be sure that you leave a comment and let us know what speaks to you. Or if you have a question about the lesson, we'd love to respond to you in the comments. Well, let's jump right in. Because when we understand that there are times that we can all mess up with our mouths, it's important that we understand what we need to do when life spins out of control and how we can actually find peace and even restore peace amongst those that we interact with. So this week's story is really interesting because it comes from 1 Samuel chapter number 25. So I'm gonna zero in on verse 35 for a second and then I'll go back and explain a little bit of how all of this kind of comes together. We're cutting in, as I like to say often, kind of into the middle of a conversation, but I'll back you up and uh, bring you up to speed in just a moment. So hang in here with me. So 1 Samuel 25 verse 35 reads like this. Then David accepted from her hand what she had brought him and said, Go home in peace. I have heard your words and granted your request. Let me read it again. Then David accepted from her hand what she had brought him and said, Go home in peace. I have heard your words and granted your request. Now, 1 Samuel chapter 25 is probably not a chapter that you read every night before you go to bed. So let me just give you a little brief overall snapshot of what's going on in this particular passage of scripture. It really is about David and a woman named Abigail. Now, what you should know about Abigail is that Abigail at this point is the widow of Nabal who was king of southern Judah. Nabal has died and, and Abigail is his widow. Well, in this story, when you read this chapter, you'll discover that she becomes one of David's first wives and she would actually become the mother of one of David's children. But this story is really one of tremendous stress and anxiety, not just for her, but for all of Southern Judah. And the reason why is because there is a potential threat to her life and to the life of the people by David and his men. But there's a big lesson that we're going to learn from how Abigail handles this situation, which literally was a situation in which her life was potentially spinning out of control. But from this story, we learn valuable lessons from Abigail about how to find peace when life is spinning out of control. Now, here's sort of the scene of what was going on is that David and his men had protected the shepherds and the cattle of Nabal for quite some time. And all David really asked for in return from Nabal prior to his death was food and water. 
Don't you think that's a pretty fair exchange? I mean, here they are working for this other king. They're protecting his sheep. They're protecting his cattle. They're protecting literally his livestock and his livelihood. And all that they asked for was just a little grub, you know, just a little grub hub. <laughs> but Nabal was very oppositional to this. He was very ill-natured and he wasn't having anything to do with them. He just wanted them to essentially work for free. He treated them like an enemy, disregarded their personal and direct needs. So what happens is Nabal dies. Upon his death, David is really upset because he and his men have been struggling, taking care of that which really was not necessarily their responsibility, and they've been ignored. And now we pick up with 1 Samuel 23 and 15, because Nabal's wife, Abigail, gets word that David is mad and that he is coming to her home with this very angry, menacing look on his face. He's fed up with this. Now, 1 Samuel 23, 25 says, but when David sent a message asking for food and water for his men, your husband would have none of it. Meaning Nabal was, have, was not gonna do anything at all to help those men who were protecting his cattle and the shepherds. Now David is headed this way and he looks very angry. All of us will perish for your husband's insults. So Abigail is in, a, is in a very, very precarious predicament because how she responds to David could literally potentially determine the life and livelihood of all of those around her. Have you ever been in a situation where if you handle it in a volatile way, you're going to get some vice results? That's exactly what's going on here. So Abigail's response, though, is really critical to understanding how to handle life and how to find peace when life is spinning out of control. Now, here she is, a fresh widow, a new widow. She has all of the pressure now of providing for herself and for any remaining children that she may have had with him. And now all of a sudden, all of life is really about to come tumbling down because not only is she a widow trying to figure out how to survive without her husband who was a king, but now on top of all of that, here comes David and his mighty men potentially to destroy them because there's been some real disheartening relationships and interactions between the two of them. But look at Abigail's response because Abigail quickly began to get her household together. She pulls all the maids or her cousins, sisters, friends, what have you together. She's like, girl, go get a pot of greens, <laughs> go kill a cow, do something. We've got to feed these men. And then she sends food ahead to David and she met him on the path up to her house. So as he is approaching her house, she's already sent some food and she meets him. Notice that she sent the food and then she meets him. She wanted to put a morsel of food in his mouth to provide for what he had requested before he actually met with her in person. And quickly she began to explain to David that she had not seen the man and she begs David for forgiveness. Now really this was Nabal's fault. It wasn't her fault because as the man, he was responsible for the household and he was responsible to communicate with the other men. So this was far out of her reach, but she apologizes on behalf of the fault. Listen, here's a good footnote. There's sometimes that we have to just apologize even when it's not even our fault because it can bring and produce peace. And that's the wisdom that Abigail shows and expresses in this story. And it's so very, very powerful. So she brought peace into an extremely difficult situation and saved her entire household because she was willing to bring peace. And she goes to David in peace. She offers David truces of peace and it results in her ultimately having peace from David because David says to her, go your way in peace. All is well. Your request has been granted. No worries about any detriment. No worries about any destruction. 
any difficulty with me. We are good. Everything is great between us. So here's the powerful application from this amazing little story. The next time you are tempted to respond to someone in a harsh manner, watch this, even when it's not your fault. Very important. Respond to them like Abigail responded to David with a soft answer and a kind spirit. That's how she was able to turn away the wrath of David and his men. And there's a passage in the Bible that says a soft answer turns away wrath. So when you meet people head on, nose to nose, when you walk around with a chip on your shoulder and with a mindset of, I don't take anything off of anybody, we don't think beyond what we're saying because technically we're taking on a whole lot from everybody. When we're talking about we don't take anything off of anybody. Actually, we're taking on a whole lot from everybody. We're taking on the same fury, the same anger, the same wrath. Then how does that work out for you? I can answer that. Not well at all. When we learn to respond to people in love, always pursuing peace, we can then experience what Abigail experienced. Because remember I told you at the beginning of this teaching, she became one of the first wives of David. Now, watch this. What if she had handled the situation differently? She may not have ever become King David's wife. And maybe it was her courtesy, her kindness, her warm spirit. Maybe it was that pot of collard greens that she sent before she ever met him that changed his heart toward her. And now that she was a widow on her own, David found compassion and passion with her to become his wife. How many opportunities do we miss out on to merge, whether that's in business, whether that is to partner with someone, whether that is simply to make a friend, to build a new relationship, a new friendship, a new association because of how we respond to other people. So this is a very powerful lesson. When life is spinning out of control, you can find peace by offering peace, by giving peace, by being willing to go beyond what you feel is fair and just and right and do what you can to make things right between you and your fellow man. Now, I love what Jesus said. And we talked about this in session number one. If you haven't seen it, go back and check it out right after you get through watching this. But Jesus says to us, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. You know how that ties in with this particular section? Like this. Jesus says, peace I leave with you. Whenever you've been bequeathed a very valuable gift, you should treasure it. But you should also not spend it all in one day. You ought to give it away to someone else when your time comes. The peace that Jesus has left to us is peace that we ought to give to other people and leave as a legacy for our family. A life and a legacy of peace means that when your family looks back on your life, when they stand up at your funeral, nobody has to lie. They don't have to cover up. They don't have to hide the fact that you were a hell raiser, but they can proudly say that mama or papa or cousin or whatever was a person who believed in peace and did everything possible to be peaceable with all men. That's what we should do. Because we have been bequeathed peace by Christ, we should therefore treasure it, value it, but leave it to someone else. He went on to say, my peace I give to you. And this is peace of God, peace of Christ that goes beyond what I think, what I feel and what I feel that I'm owed and says, I want to reconcile. That's the mindset that we should have. He said, I do not give it to you as the world gives. Abigail did not give to David as the world gives. That is to say, 
so she could boast and brag or manipulate. That's not why we should give to others. That's not why we should try to reconcile. We should reconcile because it's just right to do it. Some things we don't do because we are right. We do it because it is right. And Jesus closed that passage by saying, do not let your hearts be troubled in John 14 and do not be afraid. So Abigail when she receives news that David is coming into town and he's wroth, he is full of fury because they've been mis misjustly treated, unjustly treated. The one who brought the news to her was afraid. Their hearts were troubled for the whole area that David was going to destroy them all. But Abigail got herself together. She figured out what she could do to try to make amends. And that's exactly what she did. So if, if, and when, you have been wronged or you are wronged this year or you are blamed for something this year or you are confronted about something this year. The way to handle it is to find peace when life spins out of control by giving peace to other people, by being the first to make an effort to reconcile. Remember, Abigail's reward was that she went from one king in one castle, which was smaller to David as a king, as his wife. You never know what blessing you may miss out on by being so self-centered that you always want everything to come your way. Learn to practice the Abigail mindset and you may be shocked at what God wants to bring into your life or to bring to you or to bring you to powerful, powerful, powerful story about Abigail and David. Hey, what did you learn? What did you get? What inspired you from this teaching? I want to know, leave it in the comments. I'd love to go back and read it and know what spoke to you. Also, don't forget there's a free gift available for you. The link is in the description. Get the free PDF workbook that goes on goes along with this teaching and you'll be able to find their beautiful little stories and allegories along with discussion questions that you can share with your family and friends to help you to apply these teachings to your life so that when life spins out of control, you'll be able to know where to look to find peace. Well, listen, I appreciate you listening to me. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, give it a thumbs up, share it with someone you know who will need some peace when life spins out of control. This is Bishop A. Reginald Lippman. You've been watching the Midweek Refill. Make sure you tune in for the next episode. It's going to be great.